Hey, what's up, guys? It's Mookie Lord here, and today we're talking about Final Fantasy VII Rebirth because apparently Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is lagging behind Final Fantasy VII Remake uh, sales, apparently. And I definitely want to just dive into this because is there more to this than what the headlines are saying? So before we dive into the video, make sure you hit the subscribe button, the notification bell for more gaming content here on this channel. Now, as I said before, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth and just this Final Fantasy VII Remake trilogy um, has pretty much caused a divide within the community. Everybody definitely has their thoughts and opinions on it. I've definitely covered it here on this channel. You can check out plenty of videos where I talk about Final Fantasy VII Remake, and I'm also gonna have a bunch of videos on Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, but we definitely will go into Game Rant and also a couple other sites that pretty much dives into the situation that's going on with Final Fantasy VII Rebirth and its sales. So apparently in Game Rant, it says Final Fantasy VII Rebirth sales may be lagging behind Remake. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth has received near universal acclaim, but it might be trailing behind Final Fantasy VII Remake in terms of sales in at least one region. And this is why I wanted to pretty much talk about this because there's a lot behind this. There's, there's nuance behind this entire situation than just the headlines itself when it comes to sales. So apparently we do have one region where the game is lagging behind. So it says, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth has been well received by players so far, but it may be trailing behind its predecessor in sales according to a new report. The second installment in the Final Fantasy VII Remake saga finally launched last week, picking up where the first game had left off with Cloud and his allies leaving the city of Midgar to escape the forces of Shimra. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth follows the plot of the original of 1997 PS1 classic to the end in its second disc, flushing out the uh, out with the new story and side content along the way. So far, the reviews of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth have been overwhelmingly positive, with much of the game's praise going towards its engaging plot and hours of playable content. In fact, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is the fifth highest rated entry in the legendary JRPG franchise, uh, falling, uh, falling only behind Final Fantasy IX, Final Fantasy VI, and Final Fantasy XII, and Final Fantasy X. Wow, I didn't even, I didn't even know that. Final Fantasy IX is on there. Wow. And Final, and Final Fantasy XII too, as well? Now, I would expect Final Fantasy X, but 12 wow 9 and 12 i love 9 9 is my favorite final fantasy but i didn't expect that on i didn't expect that at all in final fantasy 12 but anyway final fantasy 7 remake integrate um the 2021 ps5 update for final fantasy 7 remake ranks behind final fantasy 7 rebirth by at least two positions but the first entry might still be ahead of its follow-up in one major area sales so according to a twitter post from the game industry biz uh christopher drink Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is trailing behind Final Fantasy VII Remake in terms of box sales in the UK, with its opening weekend being down by nearly 30%. As Drain points out, Final Fantasy VII Remake was first released just as COVID-19 lockdowns began in the UK, which impacted its physical sales. However, this only applies to the physical sale figures, as digital sales data for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth won't be released until later this week. So that's another thing too. This is why it's important when you read the headlines you have to still read the article to get the full context of this because as you see here, this is only for one region, that's the UK. But we do get some details from another region as well, which we'll get into in the other article. But as I said before, you also have to keep in mind, physical media is, and we talked about this in previous videos when it comes to this old digital era, we're starting to see more and more consumers and more and more gamers starting to lean more into the more digital side. So even though you start seeing physical copies, decline you still have to keep in mind okay if this is declining what what is the digital sales like and you have to ask that question it says final fantasy 7 uh rebirth physical sales are down from final fantasy 7 remake the comment section's christopher ding um recent post is filled with speculations about final fantasy 7 rebirth could be falling behind its predecessors in sales with many believing it could be due to decline in players who buy physical media over digital games another suggests the fact that the playstation 5 still have a smaller player base which we also have to look into and talk about so that's essentially for this article but we also have a situation here when it comes to final fantasy 7 rebirth it says final fantasy from gfinity final fantasy 7 rebirth continues the series sales decline in japan the home the home region of Final Fantasy is just, Final Fantasy is just not doing too well as far as sales are concerned. It says Final Fantasy VII Rebirth doesn't sell as well as Final Fantasy Remake or even Final Fantasy 16. 
So it says Final Fantasy Rebirth might be an excellent follow-up to the remake, but that isn't enough to stop the series' recent decline in Japan. While Rebirth was able to stop the sales charts, atop the sales chart in Japan, the game has sold significantly less than Remake, even last year's Final Fantasy 16. So, in defense of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, there are several factors that lead to this, and we're going to talk about that um, right now. And it's pretty much going through the same um, as the as the previous article. And what I want to talk about when it comes to this, when it comes to Final Fantasy VII um, Remake and this trilogy, um, I even made a tweet like about a year ago that it will be interesting to see what the sales are going to be like um, for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Um, especially after Final Fantasy VII Remake had released. And there's a couple of factors you have to keep in, uh, keep in, keep in mind here. It's for the simple fact is that Final Fantasy VII uh, Rebirth, we're going into um, an all-exclusive PS5 um, era right now. Because remember, PS4 has a big install base. They have, what, over 100 million uh, uh, consoles that's, that's out there as far as PS4 is concerned. So yes, you're going to get a lot more money from Final Fantasy VII Remake. And then they, then they re-released it again with Final Fantasy VII Integrate um on the playstation 5 then that was an exclusive so now we're going into the sequel which is rebirth now we're going to in an exclusive um era for final fantasy 7 um, remake trilogy that's only on the ps5 and this is where the problem comes in for me and my personal opinion that we talked about um before when it comes to square enix that that keep their games exclusive to sony and a lot of people say, well, if it was on Xbox, it wouldn't make much of a difference. But the point of it is, is that to try to get these games out to as many hands as possible, especially when you're a third party company. I believe third party companies should always release on multiple different platforms. They should, at the very least, um, do that. And first party studios, of course, should only make their games only for their platform for that exclusivity to get people to want to buy their console. But third parties should have no business, in my personal opinion, being exclusive, and this is what's happening, is it's relegated to just the PS5. And since it's relegated to just the PS5, you can expect lower numbers since the PS4 had much bigger units out there than the PS5. So I would expect that. And then the other factor, you can't ignore this factor. You have to remember, you have fans like me who was in love with the OG Final Fantasy VII. So you do also have a player base who went into Final Fantasy VII Remake expecting an actual remake a one-to-one -one, or at least something very close to the original with some new things added to it at least and then when they walked into the game they realized it wasn't what it was advertised now people can argue that Tetsuya Nomura said that remake has it has more than one meaning to it yes you can argue that point but people were still hyped and still wanted some resemblance of the original game so you also have these people who are upset about that saying no like I'm not going to play this game. I'm not going to play this at all after after I just experienced what happened in the last chapter of Final Fantasy VII Remake. I'm, I'm totally out of it. And then you also have other gamers out there saying that they won't buy the game until the, until the trilogy is completed. People will rather wait until the game is completed in order to be able to purchase the game and play the entire experience all together, which I have a feeling that what Square Enix is going to eventually do, they're actually going to do uh, a bundle package or they're going to take the very they're going to take the first game and weave it together to connect all of them so you have a, a three disc experience supposed to be intended to begin with so people just wait out on that which i believe that is the even smarter move to just wait wait for it and just get everything bundled together in one package and then you also got to factor in the inflation that's going on a lot of people have to pick and choose whether they get whether they get a new game or they have to get a you know or they have to feed their family and pay their bills gaming has become less of a hobby and more of a luxury where a lot of people can't afford this shit they really can't games are getting much more expensive 70 dollars for a game and then if you don't have the console which is exclusive to the ps5 you have to kick out over 500 dollars for the ps5 and then you have to get the game and a lot of people can't afford that right now. So this is another reason why that the sales are also lagging behind for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. But a lot of it does have to do with the exclusivity and the fact is that the game was marketed as a remake. And then people went to play it going in expecting a remake but got something completely different. So this is what's going on here. And then in Japan, since Square Enix has been focusing more on catering to the Western audience opposed of trying to cater to... You know the japanese audience where final fantasy had you know uh started from and originated from 
a lot of Japanese players feel feel pretty much betrayed or abandoned because they're focusing too much on the West. So that's why they're not even buying into it um, as well. And especially when it's Sony, Sony pretty much became a Westernized company. So this is a lot of factors that factor into why Final Fantasy VII Rebirth isn't working out the way it's supposed to. But as I said before, we still have to wait until digital sales come in to actually get a full scope, a full picture of how all of this is playing out. But that pretty much wraps up this video. I definitely need to get your thoughts in the comment section below. What do you think about um, all of this uh, when it comes to Final Fantasy VII uh, Remake Trilogy? Are you still investing in the game or are you going to wait until all three parts are out and then you're gonna wait to see if there's a bundle or if Square is gonna do like a special to where now they're gonna connect them all together to make one seamless game? We won't have to wait and see, but I definitely wanna hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Do you even have a PS5 at the point at this point? So if you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe button for more gaming content here on this channel. This is Moogan Lord, signing off. I'll see you game fiends later. Peace out.